It doesn't have a particularly snappy title, but the summary report of the expert panel on integrated guidelines for cardiovascular health and risk reduction in children and adolescents makes for surprisingly accessible and interesting reading. For one thing, it's well written, especially for a scientific report and a set of clinical guidelines. For another, the report, published in late 2011 in the journal Pediatrics, takes on a question at once basic and profound. What do we know about how the hearts of children become the hearts of adults? To look at this question, the panel convened by the National Heart, Lung, and Blood Institute reviewed numerous research studies and suggested new clinical guidelines for monitoring, for improving cardiovascular health in childhood. But once recommendation in particular has been the subject of much controversy within the pediatric profession, that pediatricians screen all children for cholesterol by doing a blood test in nine to 11 year olds. Until now, only children considered at high risk for cholesterol problems were to be routinely screened. Two prominent commentators on the issue have applied or appeared in the Journal of the American Medical Association in December. Dr. Bruce M. Satti and Dr. Frederick P. Rivera from the University of Washington School of Medicine argued that universal screening may lead to children being put on medication com uh, regimens like statins that are not justified by the medical evidence. In January, Dr. Stephen R. Daniels, chair <coughs> chairman of pediatrics at the University of Colorado College of Medicine and chairman of the guidelines panel, and Dr. Matthew W. Gilman, director of the obesity prevention program in the Department of Population Medicine at Harvard Medical School, who also served on the panel, published a response entitled, Is Universal Pediatric Lipid Screening Justified? They described many points of agreement, but Dr. Daniels's answer to the title question was yes, and Dr. Gilman's was no. The argument over universal lipid screening in children is by nature also a discussion of the ethics of screening tests the limits of scientific evidence and even the theoretical morality of writing lifestyle issues with pills. Everyone on every side of the issue on the overarching problem, the chain of risks and bad customers, we know the process of atherosclerosis begins in childhood and is progressive, Dr. Daniels said in an interview. We also know that individuals who are able to maintain low risk or optimum risk status throughout their childhood and throughout their young adulthood then get to a point where they're they very likely to have cardiovascular disease. Those who reach age 45 or 50 with no risk factors, they don't smoke and they have normal weight, body mass index blood pressure and cholesterol have life expectancies stretching into the 90s, he continued. But with even a single factor, risk factor, like high cholesterol, like expectancy, or life expectancy, drops to the early 80s. I think you could put all this together and argue that the job of parents and the job of pediatricians and primary care physicians is to work to deliver children to young adulthood with minimum risk, Dr. Daniels said. Those who are universal screening say that it will find the children with familial hypercholesterolemia, a genetic condition that can lead to early heart disease and death. Almost everyone agrees that if these uh, should be considered for long-term treatment with 
statins, the cholesterol-lowering drugs commonly used in adults. In theory, you could also find those children by asking about a family history of cardiovascular problems, but that does not always work. Families don't always know the history of don't talk, don't talk about it, said Dr. Sarah Ferranth, director of the Preventive Cardiology Clinic at Children's Hospital. Still, if we screen all children, we will find many with abnormal lipid levels who do not have familial hypercholesterolemia. Proponents of a universal screening suggest that the discovery of such elevated lipid levels might prompt lifestyle interventions, counseling, and help with diet and exercise. It doesn't have a particularly snappy title, but the summary report of the expert panel on integrated guidelines for cardiovascular health and risk reduction in children and adolescents makes for surprisingly accessible and interesting reading. For one thing, it's well written, especially for a scientific report and a I'm sorry, and a set of clinical guidelines. For another, the report published in late 2011 in the Journal of Pediatrics takes on a question at once bas basic and profound. What do we know about how the hearts of children become the hearts of adults? In, oh, I'm sorry. To look at this question, the panel convened by the National Heart and Lung Institute reviewed numerous research studies and suggested new clinical guidelines uh, for monitoring, for improving, and